Hello, uh, I am Mark Tasman. I'm an artist and a photographer and a teacher, and I work with digital media and culture. Today I'm going to be talking about future cultures. And to illustrate something about this, I uh, brought along a um, cultural artifact that I helped to make when I was 12 years old in 1984 in Louisville, Kentucky. When the Louisville Free Public Library started a contest among kids to design computer programs, one child came out on top. 12-year-old Mark Tasman won the contest at the Bon Air branch, but as 32 Alliance Carol and C reports, computers aren't his only interest. Not many kids asked to go to summer school, but 12-year-old Mark Tasman signed up for an engineering class on his own. Mark is one of 33 students who are taking a summer class called Increase. The program is sponsored by private industry to get minority students interested in engineering. Once Mark leaves summer school, he heads home, and most days he spends two to five hours at the computer. Mark is fascinated by the computer. He started designing programs when he was 11. Now he's already written 40 original programs. It might be tough for somebody else, but it will, and it's tough for me, but I, I usually think them out before I start to write them, and then they're not that tough. It's like learning um, some exotic language that you have no idea about. Mark taught himself how to type and hopes to start with high resolution graphics soon. I know there's other people like me, but I don't know who they are and I don't know what they can do or anything. I just know I'm here. Carolyn C, 32 Alive News. I just know I'm here. So I, I feel like I need to put a little context around that. Um, and that is that the reporter asked me, she said, do you think it's possible, Mark, for a teenager to hack into government uh, computer network and start World War III? And I said, uh, because I did not have a modem, I was not able to connect to the uh, network, I said, I know there's other people out there like me I don't know who they are, I don't know what they can do or anything, I just know I'm here. So what that taught me at an early age, the tender age of 12 years old, is that all media have this power and potential to distill, distort, transform, and transmit our experiences. You might be asking, well, um, how is it that we're watching this right now? Um, well, on the day that the this, this story was set to air, my parents went out to a TV and appliance store and paid $500 for a top-loading VHS video cassette recorder. The price was so steep, in fact, that my grandmother offered to buy it for the entire extended family. That is four families sharing one VCR. Can you imagine a VCR? Can you guys imagine a VCR? There it is. <laughs> Um, so it was through this uh, um, act here of recording that, uh, and, and there, actually there it remained on that, that VHS tape um, for decades. Occasionally we brought it out uh, to impress uh, friends and family, but it mostly uh, stayed there and it got, uh, got sort of the name Computer Genius involved in that way. But this is what I think makes that um, video uh, special and remarkable. When uh, news airs, it's meant to go over the air. When it's broadcast, it goes over the air and it disappears, like our breath on a cold morning. It's out there, you can see it just for an instant, and it dissipates, it's ephemeral. So um, by digitizing that, as I did um, decades later, I brought all of that, those cultural bits from 1984 that were meant to disappear, I brought them into present day so that we can access it with our current digital technology. Now, it's, um, it's really cool to be able to access all of this stuff on all of our gadgets that we have all over the place here, but there's something else special about digital technology, and that is the ability to share artifacts on the network. Um, so this, for me, this is what's um, uh, 
really exciting is that we can share, we can connect with other people. I'm sure you all have the same feeling when you first got online and you were like, wow. Um, but something else happened. Well, I uploaded that to the digital network. And now if you search uh, videos for Computer Genius, this is the video that comes up as the top view. <laughs> and it has over a million views on YouTube, um, actually close to 1.3 probably more than that right now. Yes, a little bit more. Um, and over 6,000 comments. And for me, this is also a part that's really interesting uh, because we here now, we get to see how people in our time interpret those messages from 1984, how they uh, begin to understand the culture from 1984. And I think there, there's something to this in looking at these comments um, because um, if I hadn't digitized that video, it's likely that that VHS tape would have ended up in the dumpster. Um, and so it's through that intentional care of the media that we can access culture from other times. Um, and so I'd like to argue here that th the things that we think of today as throwaway media are actually the things that people in the future will value the most. <coughs> the newspaper that our grandparents wrapped fish in, right? Historians are going to the archives. They don't, want, they don't want that nasty paper, but they're going to the archives trying to find that newspaper in, accessible, uh, in an accessible form. Um, and because what we know is that, uh, well, we can understand things about um, culture and other times through great works of art, through movies, literature, television, um, but if we really want to know what life was like at a certain time, we have to look at how people actually relate to one another, how they actually talk, how they actually use technology. So culture, I think of it this way, not only how we relate to one another, nice shoes, thank you very much, cool story bro, thank you very much madame, um, not only that stuff, but I think of culture as a living mechanism. Come on this trip with me. It's an embedded code that transmits knowledge from the past. Here it comes, it's coming down. And I think I see my grandmother's recipe for cookies. Here it is, mm, that's delicious. And we have a time capsule and we're loading this stuff. We're making choices. We're saying, mm, that's good. I'm gonna put that in there. Every time we act, we are impacting future culture. We're closing this time capsule up. We're not even closing it. We just keep on sending it down the line. And I think, Oh my God, thank God that that 12 year old does not have, ac that, that me, that does not have access to that, the full range of comments that are visible uh, online uh, right now. Um, and in that full, I'll show you some samples, but in that full range, um, we can see all kinds of interesting things going on. I saw uh, patterns, people asking same questions over and over again, and I began to think of these things in categories. One of the categories that I saw frequently was um, identity. And um, so, I mean, this is, a, this is a really powerful question I think this person asks, and it's in the category of identity, which is why kids back then like to wear hot panty like girls? It's <laughs> a good question. Or uh, where can I get his shorts? These are the burning questions of our day. Um, the other thing that attracted a lot of attention, so from those more than 6,000 comments, uh, more than a sixth of them, more than 1,000 had the word program in some variant in there. And most of them, many of them dealt, were, were addressing directly the dialect, the way that the reporters pronounced programs rather than programs. Um, and I think it was that particular attention to uh, dialect, perhaps it was my cadence, style of speech, um, maybe it was the content of what I said, but a kind of superhero mythology developed uh, ab about uh, the computer genius. <laughs> Tony Stark before the iron suit, uh, the Dark Knight, because he's the hero programming deserves, but not the one it needs right now. So we will hunt him because he can take it. Um, and all of these things, I think, <laughs> So they fit under this category of identity, this umbrella of identity. Where is he now? Is he doing drugs behind an alley? Is he still a virgin? Um, is he part of an elite uh, and subversive group of hackers and internet activists? I can neither confirm nor deny any of these allegations. 
Um, and with that raising up of the, the myth of the computer genius came um, these flaming egos of pre-adolescent commenters. This comment right here happens to be a, what I consider a meta comment. That is a comment that describes or addresses a whole category, a range of comments. And I'll show you um, something here, an example. It goes like this. I'm 11 years old and I'm better than him in coding. Fuck off, prove it. <laughs> and so <laughs> and this, this is one of the more tame uh, tr trolls, uh, trolling trolls. You wouldn't, you, you could not imagine the colorful and imaginative things that some trolls would um, suggest that other trolls uh, do to themselves. It's really, um, really beautiful. Um, uh, so I began to comment a bit here, uh, tentatively. I say tentatively because I'm uh, was fully aware of this uh, axiom, internet axiom: don't feed the trolls, which is to say. Do not engage with the troublemakers unless you want to be complicit in making trouble yourself. Um, and so um, I saw, I, I read, you know, sometimes on a daily basis, sometimes I would check in, um, you know, a month at a time, but I saw some good perspective taking. Um, <laughs> and, um, and some, uh, a, a bit of self-reflection. Um, not before a truly offensive uh, comment was made. Uh, by the way, you know something horrific is, uh, and terrible is about to be said when somebody says, no offense, that, that really terrible thing. Uh, and another thing is, why am I watching this? So uh, a little bit of uh, self-reflection here, perhaps a sign of personal growth to come. It was, <laughs> it was good to see. Um, another uh, category here uh, is... Um, uh, screen time, attitudes about screen time. And um, in this, you know, we can really see how people are looking back and thinking about those differences between 1984 and today. And I actually liked this, and this idea of uh, perspective taking. Um, and I began to challenge some uh, uh, trolls a bit, but I want to challenge you too. So in 1984, two to five hours at the computer seemed like a long time. But today, can you imagine spending two to five hours away from a computer? Two to five hours without the internet? Two to five hours uh, you know, not looking at any screens, not with your cell phone, right? We turned off our cell phones. Um, and so um, this kind of um, engagement was, was the stuff that I w was satisfying to me. I'm, I'm about to do a dramatic reading of a, a comment um, coming up. It is along the same lines of uh, the two to five hours, and it goes like this. Most days, he spends two to five hours at the computer. Two to five hours? I spend more than 10 hours a day at the computer, mostly masturbating, <laughs> but still. Um, and I had, to, I had to applaud this uh, commenter because um, this was the kind of cultural critique that I enjoyed, that I liked to see. Um, and I wanted to see more of that, that kind of thing. But the more I did that, uh, the more people began to realize that the kid was in the room. And I realized I uh, needed to be a little bit careful because um, my username is Mark Tasman and um, the kid in the video's name is Mark Tasman. And um, I go by the name of Mark Tasman. We're really all the same person, but I'm a real person. Um, you know, I have a real life, I have a family, I have a job, I'm a teacher. So I needed to be really careful about how I uh, reacted to some of these comments. Um, because, <laughs> because um, you know, this, this was my, my pivot point right here. You know, what is it that I actually wanted to say rather than just simply reacting to trolls or trying to get in a witty uh, jab or joke here or there? And it was this line of, if you haven't noticed, they pulled apart every bit of text in that video. Everything that I said, everything the reporter said, um, not just the written text, but visual text of the video. Mark taught himself how to type. And I, and I think about it today, and it, actually, yes, that's the thing that I was and am most proud of, that I identified uh, a valuable skill. I persevered to master that skill in spite of the social norms which um, expected young women to learn to type because they were going to be secretaries. Men could, uh, you know, they could be reporters and journalists, but for the most part, it was women. So this idea in 1984 must have seemed 
uh, jarring to see a 12-year-old boy typing, uh, almost as if a chimpanzee riding on a Segway would come across the stage, or I could bring out uh, a baby and he could tell you about the stocks that he's trading. Um, and so I pressed this particular commenter a little bit further. I said, um, by the way, can you read your grandmother's cursive handwriting? Um, and the reason that I asked this question is because I'm aware of the shift in the curriculum that's moving away from this technology that was invented when a person dipped a feather into ink and pushed that ball of ink along. They're moving away from cursive and teaching <laughs> keyboarding skills. It makes sense. But I have a concern, which is what will happen to that culture? What will happen to that knowledge that's embedded in our grandparents' cursive handwriting, in our cursive handwriting? Who will need, re, be able to read that? Who will be able to have access to that knowledge? He apologized, Ryan apologized to me, said, I'm sorry if I came off rude. I said, not at all. I'm really, really happy to have these kinds of exchanges. And it's true, I was really happy, and I am really happy to make these kinds of connections. And so this is what I think, this, these are the kinds of connections that I think uh, we should be looking for. Um, so now instead of feeding the trolls, now trolls feed me. Um, and so hot Cheetos and liquor, yes, it's coming soon. Um, so I'd like to um, end here with a, a recipe. Are, are there any yogurt makers out there? Any yogurt makers in the house? Well, okay, so if, if you make yogurt, you know you, you need, and this is the actual terminology, you need two ingredients. You need a medium, that is often milk, and you need culture, which you can get by scooping yogurt. And you take that scoop of yogurt and you put it in the medium, and it's gotta be warm for a couple days, but something amazing happens. That culture that we put in intentionally transforms the media so that the media itself is no longer recognizable as milk. It becomes yogurt. What happens if we don't intentionally put that media in the, uh, put the culture in the media and uh, we let it sit out for a couple days? We get spoiled milk, unfit for human consumption. So I'm gonna end here uh, just, just to say this, that. Um, we don't make culture from scratch. It comes down to us. We decide what's good based on our values. We're choosing, uh, we enjoy it in the present, we taste it, we modify it, and we send it on. We send on what's good. So let's do this. Let's decide what's good in our culture, and let's pass that on. Thank you.